What's up everyone? Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube. It's August, we've got a roundup for you. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with all the content that's coming out from Guy in a Cube. And you can hit that bell icon to get notifications directly in your inbox. All right, let's dig in. First up on the list is a blog post from Tristan Malherbe. I might be pronouncing that wrong. This was a community blog post over on the community site for Power BI, and he looked through Pivot and Unpivot with Power Query. If you haven't used Pivot and Unpivot inside of Power Query when shaping your data, you should have another look. So he walks through using both Pivot and Unpivot, gives some examples of how they're used inside of Power Query or inside of Power BI Desktop and shows you the power of these functions. It's a great way to help cleanse some data or to shape it in a way that makes sense for your reports. So if you're interested in it, if you haven't looked at it, be sure to check out this blog post to see how to use it. The folks over at the Excel Club had a blog post where they look at using a blockchain database with Power BI. I've seen blockchain in the news a lot. I've been kind of curious about it. So it's interesting to see this example of using that with Power BI. The example they used used a blogging site called Steemit, and there is a SQL database behind it, which is the blockchain database, and they use that to analyze blog posts and items with inside of that blog site itself. If you're also curious about blockchain databases and maybe using that with Power BI, be sure to check out this blog post. Have you found it hard to wrap your head around join types with data? So like left join, outer join, all that stuff. Jason Thomas has a blog post and a report for you to help visualize that. So his blog post is all about visualizing join types with a report that he has available for you to take a look at. I thought this was really interesting. He looks at the different types of join, so left join, right join, inner join, full outer join, all of those types, visualizes it in two different ways that I think really helps understand what these join types are. This is not only helpful with Power BI, but it's helpful like if you're just doing database type operations with either SQL Server, or Oracle, whatever, they all use join types. And so understanding how those work can be very powerful when you're working with data and helping to understand why you may or may not be seeing the data that you expected. So if you've been struggling wrapping your head around join types or you just wanna see a really cool report, go check out this blog post. I've got a link for it down in the description below along with links for everything I'm talking about and some bonus links. We had a blog post for the service updates and the mobile app for Power BI for the month of July. And there were a couple of items in this blog post. First off, you can subscribe to dashboards now. Also along with dashboards, there is a performance inspector for your dashboard itself. So before you could view analytics for your dashboard, now you can actually get some performance information off your dashboard too, and get some suggestions for maybe how to fix performance of that dashboard. The Snowflake and SAP BW connectors for direct query are now supported with the on-premises data gateway. In July, we also announced data refresh APIs. So now you can refresh your data sets programmatically. And there was a new Q&A experience inside of the iOS version of the mobile app. I did see some tweets about, hey, there's this new name for Q&A. And no, Q&A is still Q&A, but it's a new experience inside of the mobile app, specifically on iOS devices. So be sure to check that out. We had a blog post centered around Power Apps and Power BI. So before we had, there was a post out there that talked about embedding a Power App inside of your Power BI dashboard. This can be done through the web tile. And now you can actually embed Power BI tiles inside of your Power App. So if you're using Power Apps and you're interested in integrating Power BI inside of your app itself, definitely check out this blog post. All right, what was your favorite item in this week's roundup? For me, I thought the report that Jason Thomas put together for the join types was pretty creative, but I wanna hear from you. Go and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up or pound it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.